Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Karen Late to this episode of What's Next. And uh, Dr. Late is uh, is the consultant for digital transformation at BCX, and it's a term we hear a lot of, and people always talking about digital transformation, especially since COVID nineteen, uh, you know, started off, and I guess that uh, kind of accelerated digital transformation. All organisations had digital transformation on the agenda; they were on the journey. But with COVID-19, we've seen massive acceleration of this. Uh, firstly, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us, Dr. Late. Thanks so much, Aki, and thanks for having me, and uh, wonderful to chat to you today. Yeah, no, it's great to chat to you, and I'm looking forward to our chat because, you know, everyone is still talking about digital transformation, and I guess it's a journey that we're going to be on for a while for, you know, many organizations. But... Uh, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to come up with a new terminology, right? Uh, because uh, I don't know. I get the sense that it's all it's 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 overused. It's old hat by now. Uh, is it old hat? Um, I mean, what, what's your take on digital transformation? Is it overused in and used in the wrong sense in many regards? No, I think it's still definitely um, in vogue, or there's a lot of focus on it. Yes, companies have accelerated. But if you think of the major impact that it has on an organization and um, uh, really fundamentally because ultimately digital transformation is about, yes, bringing in digital, but transformation means radical change. And uh, uh -huh. companies are on different points in that journey and especially large established organizations they have so much legacy and uh, that they're bringing along that needs to change. So it's definitely, we are seeing more and more companies that have maybe gotten to a specific point or started realizing I was only dabbling with what we call digital transformation and now we really need to become serious as to what this means for the business. Okay, now that, that makes sense. So when you look at digital transformation, you know, this, this, this terminology, this thing called digital transformation, how would you actually define digital transformation? Yeah, so I think the, the common definition for digital transformation is bringing in digital technologies to help improve, to optimize your business, your processes, to bring in that automation with the aim of affecting your customer experience, so the, the customer experience at the end of the day. But that customer experience mm. expands to your workforce, to your suppliers, to that whole ecosystem. And once again, if we look at digital transformation, digital is about that technology that you're bringing in. And so in other words, first digitizing, which means that you are taking um, your manual forms, making it digital. So you are collecting more data of your customers and the data then helps you to um, you analyze that data to see how you can improve the customer experience and then digitalizing, mm. which means your basically the whole process that you that you need to go and change and and make more optimal in that process. And then the transformation. But as I said, to say, no, it's not just a bit of efficiency that you want to get. There are sometimes radical changes mm. that you want to bring to the table in your business model, in changing your products, in your interaction with your customer. So, so that is, um, if you say digital transformation, that is how I would define it. Okay. And I guess at the end of the day, businesses want to unlock value. They want to make the experience for the customer better, as you mentioned. They want to add more agility. And you've got to in today's market where you, there's so much competitiveness out there and organizations doing things better than what you might be doing. You really need to look at it and you really need to apply this digital transformation in an organization. Now, it is easier said than done, right? How, how do organizations actually achieve this radical change that we're talking about? Yeah, no, it is, um, it, it, it's a process that you need to go through. And digital transformation, as they say, is a journey. It's not one step. So even though we talk about radical change, it is counterintuitive to say that we need to have a stepped approach 
But it is. We need that stepped approach. We need to be pragmatic about it. We need to understand where we are at. So the organization needs to understand where they are at, what is the basis from where they are, are um, setting out their journey, setting that vision as to where they want to go, and then creating that stepped approach to achieve that vision. Uh, so that is the, mm -hmm. the pragmatic approach to achieving digital transformation. And yeah, obviously, uh, technologies change, so you need to be agile, ultimately, in that approach, and agile in terms of the, 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 the kind of things that you want to achieve, ultimately. But yeah, starting point, vision, stepped approach. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's not just about saying, oh, we're going to digitize our accounting department, or we're going to move a lot of our functionality to the cloud. That is, yes, part of digital transformation, but I often find that many organizations have this knee-jerk reaction when they're doing digital transformation. They're saying, oh, we've been left behind. We need to start speeding up things, digitizing things. And it's not quite as easy as that. You know, you need to, as you said, you need to take an approach to understand what your business needs and how you're going to get about it. So when you look at organizations um, and uh, what, well, what do organizations need to be considering on this particular journey? So, so I guess what I'm asking is how, how can the digital transformation journey be made practical? Yes. So, like I said, firstly, you set that vision, but ultimately the, the yes. practical approaches of it comes back to your people, process, and technology. And you need to consider those that, that traditional triangle and in that sequence. So if I, for example, if you now start with people, people, um, the important yes. thing, two, two things. Firstly, your leadership. And it's not only your exco or your most senior leadership. It's all leaders in the organization need to be seen to participating in that digital transformation, using the new technology, supporting it. And, and, and in that way, setting the tone for the digital transformation. So that, uh, the first thing on, on people. But the second thing on people yes. is really, um, it, it touches how we do things. And that's yes. why we come to this like a, a, a digital ready kind of culture, uh, the practices of the people and, and the change that is needed uh, in the people, because the people are ultimately going to make the technologies work. So, so that's why we are saying people is sort of the, the first, the first point of departure when when you look at it mm, from a mm. um, from the, the the triangle perspective. Yeah, and and you know, um, if you don't get the people buy in mm. into this whole transformation, it's going to you know just collapse and fall flat on its face. As we've seen happen, yeah. you don't have the support of the people behind these technologies. It's not going to happen. But the people are very important, but you also mentioned process in that particular um, example that you yeah. used. Can you just expand on that and be a bit more specific on that? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to do that because process is actually that operating model, that things that, that, that uh, or business architecture that you have that makes the business mm. work. And, um, but if you now think of digital transformation, we are changing the focus from that internal, internal focus business processes to what are the touch points with the customer? What is that customer experience? So that's where we talk about the user journeys, your personas that you, that you put in place mm. and, and you start rethinking your, your business and your services and your offerings from how do customers experience it? So, but once again, coming back to your, your, the, the way that you do it uh, in the background, uh, you can think of it as a, as a duck on water, you know, it's paddling, yes. the, it, it's paddling, it looks like it's floating on the water and that's the customer interface, it looks very smooth, but underneath it's like this furious paddling and that's the processes that need to make that smooth customer interface work. So that's why your business yes. processes and the way that you optimize it and the way that you then link it to that um, user journey, why, why that's so important. Mm. Yeah. I, I want to go back to the people for just a second because I just thought about something and I just want to expand on that because the mindset of digital transformation and the human side of digital transformation, as you mentioned, 
Um, I, I guess the last two years have been extraordinary for most organizations because, you know, people are now have been working remotely and virtually. Some people continue to work that way. And it's, it's actually a, a massive change in how we worked in 2019 versus how we work today. And I know that you did some studies around this this virtual workplace and uh, what we call Industry 4.0 versus Industry 5.0. What did you discover with hybrid work and that kind of thing? I mean, what, what, what stood out from your studies and just looking at how people uh, adapt to this digital transformation and this hybrid way of working? Because I guess the hybrid way of working is a key element of this digital transformation that we're talking about. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think um, a couple of years back, it was basically people wanted to work. So so with with my studies as well, looking at what is the enabling the performance of virtual knowledge workers so what is it mm. that you need to do to enable the virtual knowledge workers and i mean there, these there were two things obviously technology uh, is always there but it's also your support from the management and the management being clear as to what the expectations are and what is expected of that that individual when they're working remote and the individual being transparent in terms of um, how they are working and what they are doing and what they are delivering and i mean it's now still like that it's the fact that um, mm. just from that hybrid work perspective when people are not working or, or in direct contact with their managers the their deliverables so it's becoming much more deliverable based and um, the deliverables are then showing that they are working. And I think from a, if you now think of digital transformation, digital transformation mm. is making that possible because your processes are collecting the data of where people are working and what they are doing. So you yes. can go and count how many incidents have been resolved or how many purchase orders have been uh, processed um, and, and that kind of thing. So. So it is about the, the hybrid work is about um, about that visibility and managers then yes. giving the tools and the organizations giving the tools for people to be able to work in that way. But also, if I can expand it a okay. bit towards that um, industry four, industry five kind of discussion. So industry four was now this thing about um, we need to digitize. It's now the, the um, digital era. And a, a lot of um, concerns were raised around, yeah, but now we're just going to automate and people are going to lose their jobs. And um, mm. that's, that wasn't seen as a positive thing. So Industry 5 is now bringing back the human element and saying we need to talk about human-centric transformation. And um, we, the, in the, we, previously you might have said, okay, we're just going to automate processes. Now you are starting to bring in that critical thinking, that um, innovative spirit of, the, of, the, um, of the, the people, the problem solving capability and putting that on top and calling it the, the digitally augmented work that we are doing. So we are using digital to augment our work and not just replace mm. people. And I think that is the, the key difference between just talking about the Industry 4 and then going towards um, the, the Industry 5 kind of discussion that we are having. Okay, no, that's fascinating. And I guess it all comes down to a, a, a new form of culture in an organization. You talk of company culture, and now we're talking about digital culture and how people are experiencing technology and those sort of things. I mean, what do you see with how people experience technology, for example? Are there massive changes? Do, do you find that uh, people have become more productive or less productive for that matter? Yeah, so um, if you think of uh, how people are experiencing that technology, is so there's a perceived usefulness sometimes that that comes in to say if i if they perceive that the technology is going to assist them they just adopt it uh, so that that is the the easy route to to follow and yes people become more productive but there's also more expectations the whole time to say um, mm. so you need to be this whole digital ready culture is about 
um, learning the whole time, learning new things and learning how the new technologies work and being innovative about how you are using those technologies. And, and those are the kind of things that you then bring into this digital ready culture um, of people using technologies and uh, learning, that, that continuous learning and agility. Those are the, the key mm. um, differentiators in this digital ready culture. Uh, Dr. Light, with the research that you did and your studies around the virtual workplace, are there, are there any real blockers or like hurdles in this entire process that organizations need to be aware of? Well, I think that the um, a blocker is still the bandwidth. And that is, you can see that in different industries as well, not only mm. the work from home and the hybrid work. Um, when the bandwidth goes down, when we've got load shedding and uh, some of the towers aren't available, then it just means you, you, you physically, you can't, you can't work remote or you can't use the centralized systems if you are sitting in a remote location. And then also if you just think of um, even in the education sector, uh, students, it, it's more and more that, we lo that we're looking at bringing in the digital transformation, the new technologies and teaching students via the virtual technologies because they are going to be experiencing that in the work situation as well. And uh, so, so, yeah, so I, I think the, the access to data is sometimes a problem um, and, and the bandwidth that we have available. So, so that's definitely a, a blocker from a technology perspective. But coming back to the people, um, now that you become digital, if you think of it, the process is now online. So as I'm working, my data is captured or the data that I'm processing, I am linked to that transaction. I'm linked to signatures, to, to contractual documents. So sometimes it's also the fear that of those individuals that becomes a blocker to say, but I'm, I'm fearing to be caught out or to be now suddenly all accountable and, and just mm. to be that visibility of my work becomes a, a, a fear and, and becomes a blocker in that sense that people become um, fearful of then engaging in the digital technologies. Uh, so that is... Because I guess you, you, you... Yeah, I mean, sorry to interrupt you, because you're almost like on the, in the spotlight uh, all the time. You're, you're online, you're live all the time, yes. right? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, um, and that's what, what we have found is uh, you need to see it as a, as a positive so that you can, you can actually now prove that you were working. Um, and, but, but on the other hand, those practices, bringing in those different mm. practices and the way that that works, uh, you need to understand that to be able to manage that change control, the changes with the people um, in the business. Yes. See, Dr. Karen Late, you've really uh, tied it uh, up all together. When you talk about digital transformation, it's not just about uh, moving to the cloud and doing your systems. So in a nutshell, if you can just wrap up for us by, you know, going through those critical success factors when it comes to digital transformation and, and how does BCX help in this entire alignment, in this entire process? Because it's not just about going to the to a, to a BCX, for example, and buying the technologies you need for your transformation, there's a lot that you guys do together with the prospective client to help them along this particular journey. So let's go through those critical success factors and how BCX can help. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got, um, I, I, I would like to list about six critical success factors. Uh, so we've spoken about the leadership, the importance of leadership and their support the focus on people and, and the practice changes that are li linked to the digital ready culture um, uh, for individuals, then understanding, documenting and, and optimizing the, the business architecture. We spoke about the processes, how important that is. So you, you need to document that and um, get an understanding where you are from that perspective, which also links to your technologies. Um, and then mm -hmm. a data-driven mindset because you're making everything is becoming data. 
And if you don't yes. start managing that and having an architecture and having a vision around that, then uh, you're going to lose out on some of the optimization that you can get and the insights. Uh, then obviously, because you've got data, it needs to be secure. Uh, so cybersecurity is uh, the fifth uh, factor. And then, because we've spoken about a program that you need to follow, you need to have a central project office or program office and manage the demand because it's going to change. Even though you start off with a roadmap, it's going to change as people discover new technologies. So you need that central program and uh, demand management forum. So those are basically the six things. And um, then coming to BCX, oh, yes, we can help you in all of this. Um, so that, that's a very broad statement. So we can, we can help you to set the vision. We've got advisory services, uh, business consulting and advisory services, where we can help you set that digital transformation vision. And also, uh, we've got an extensive business process, mapping, enterprise architecture that pulls all of this together. So we can really help you start the journey, um, create that as-is view that you need, and help you set that vision in terms of your journey. Then, obviously, we also help with, we've got the, the cloud, we've got all the technologies, we've got cyber security, um, and so we can wrap this all together and, and really bring to the table from the vision, the strategies, to the actual execution um, from, from start to end. Yeah. And, and I guess, does that include an encompass for, uh, you know, helping an organization identify what needs to be processed? You know, what, what digital transformation has to happen? Uh, because sometimes organizations just don't know, you know, and uh, you guys would come in at BCX and say, well, you know, if you look at how you do this, if you do it that way, it's going to be a lot more efficient. Would you come in and do that sort of thing as well in an organization? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's part of the business process mapping and where we go okay. in and understand the organization from what they call a business architecture perspective. So how are you currently doing it? Uh, where are those points that we can automate, optimize, change your processes? And at the same time, as I said, what are the s supporting systems, the new systems or the new ways of work that we can bring in? and that we can help you identify. So obviously, as part of that, we would uh, do a bit of a research in the different industries we bring with yes. that industry knowledge, um, looking at what's happening in a specific industry, and then map that, help the customers to map that in, in their uh, digital roadmap as well. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, Dr. Corin Late, Consultant for Digital Transformation at BCX, Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of What's Next and really um, taking a deep dive into digital transformation and all the different aspects to it. It's not just about the, the technology, it's about the people and a whole lot more. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Lake. That's a pleasure. Thanks so much. It was uh, good talking to you, Aki.